The Splinter Cell game snuck onto the scene in the 2000s and captivated the world with stealth gameplay that wasn't immediately frustrating, but the series went through a lot of revisions before it got to the place it was today. From a 70s-inspired sci-fi game to a James Bond ripoff, there's a lot behind the creation of it, so let's explore this series. My name is Brittany, and today on the leaderboard we are counting 107 facts on Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. Let's get started! Fact number one. In 1996, renowned author Tom Clancy used money from his successful career as an author to co-found Red Storm Entertainment, which is now owned by Ubisoft. Fact two. Splinter Cell didn't start as a modern pseudo-realistic spy game. It was set as a weird retro sci-fi futuristic game and was originally called The Drift. Fact three. And it wasn't a transformation from The Drift to Splinter Cell. There was a period where it was supposed to be a James Bond game. Fact four. Splinter Cell was created in part thanks to Ubisoft wanting to make a Metal Gear Solid 2. Fact five, the Drift also spent a period with a setting based on Tom Clancy's The Sum of All Fears. Sam Fisher is more or less a composite of every big military created in the last 20 years. Fact 6, Nathan Wolf is the designer credited with implementing spy elements into The Drift and setting the game on its path to become Splinter Cell. Fact 7, the original main character's name for The Drift, the precursor to Splinter Cell, was Buster. <laughs> Not exactly a good name for a super secret spy. Fact 8, the stealth elements for Splinter Cell were heavily inspired by both The Thief and Metal Gear Solid games. Fact 9, Sam Fisher was spawned out of the hypothetical idea that the NSA needed someone to do their dirty work, hence the third echelon. Fact 10, early concept art shows a version of Sam Fisher with blue eyes, not green. If anyone actually sees any part of Sam Fisher or his gear, he's probably doing it wrong. Fact 11, according to Ubisoft character designer Martin Kaya, Sam Fisher's final face was heavily inspired by celebrities like George Clooney, Hugh Jackman, and Ed Harris. He later said that Johnny Messner's character Kelly Lake from the 2003 film Tears of the Sun was exactly what he pictured for Sam, and that if there ever was a movie, Messner would get his vote for playing Sam. Fact 12, Sam Fisher's tri-goggles were an attempt to give the character something iconic, which is great and all, but it still bugs me that they're so bright and obvious when you're trying to be sneaky. Fact 13, originally Tom Clancy rejected the idea of Sam Fisher having trifocal goggles, saying that the goggles were impossible to make. The creators argued that having two separate sets of goggles would have made for an awkward gameplay and convinced Clancy to allow it. Fact 14, Sam Fisher is voiced by the renowned villain actor Michael Ironside. Fact 15, Ironside thought that in early reading, Sam Fisher was a bit too cold and violent, so he sat down and helped the team give their violent silent killer a heart. I find those threats before they get out of hand, and I eliminate them. Fact 16, Ironside also insisted that the voice actors be in the same room together rather than separately, which most studios do. It's what I'm used to. I get that it's easier to act off each other when in the same room, but with that said, most people only ever really talk into Sam's ear, so <laughs> they were more together than they were in the game. Fact 17, in order to integrate real-time lighting into gameplay, the developers behind Splinter Cell modified the Unreal Engine by creating brand new lighting technology just for the game. Fact 18, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell was released on November 18, 2000. Two. Fact 19, in the first Splinter Cell game, one of the code phrases Sam uses, a bright cold day in April, is the first line from George Orwell's 1984. Fact 20, in the first Splinter Cell game, the first name of Vyacheslav Grigo's personal driver is Hamlet. Fact 21, the guards in Splinter Cell are probably more cultured than you give them credit for. They will whistle if I were a rich man from Fiddler on the Roof. Fact 22, in Splinter Cell 1, there's an Easter egg at the very beginning of the first training level. Hop up on the wall to find a door where you will find some lock picks to open up another easter egg later in the level. Fact 23, the briefing in the observation room in the first level can be opened up with the code 5656. Most easter eggs tend to lead to the next one, so follow the trail. Fact 24, glitch in the second police mission. Jump off the roof directly onto the hood of the van and you will be dragged off the map and hear some cool audio glitches. Fact 25, for the third mission in the defense ministry, there's a staircase near the beginning. Climb all the way to the top, then turn on your night vision to see a hidden beam. You can carefully wall hop and balance your way up to another Another platform with some extra lockpicks and a medikit. Fact 26, hidden in the CIA HQ level is an easter egg referencing the X-Files, where the player can enter a secret room and receive a data stick containing an email sent to FM at the FBI, presumably referring to the character Fox Mulder. Fact 27, in Mission 6 at the Communitech building, you can play miniature basketball. Fact 28, Splinter Cell is the second Tom Clancy video game franchise to not be based on a Tom Clancy book, with the first being Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon in 2001, but we'll get back to that. Fact 29, 
1999, the original name for the second game in the Splinter Cell series, Pandora Tomorrow, was Shadow Strike. I guess alliteration was too silly for a spy thriller. Fact 30, Pandora Tomorrow was the first Splinter Cell game to be developed by Ubisoft Shanghai in China. Fact 31, Splinter Cell Pandora Tomorrow is the only game where actor Dennis Haysbert, who is best known as President David Palmer from 24 and the man from the Allstate Insurance commercials, voiced for Irving Lambert. Fact 32, Pandora Tomorrow included a couple maneuvers that would not be put back in later games, like the SWAT turn. Fact 33, Pandora Tomorrow is the first game to introduce spies versus mercs multiplayer. Fact 34, Pandora Tomorrow is a reference to the Greek myth of Pandora's box, where a woman named Pandora opened a box containing all the evils of humanity and released them into the world. Fact 35, text from Bible verse Romans 1-4 can be seen written on several posters in the Jerusalem level of Pandora Tomorrow. It reads, Jesus Christ declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead. Fact 36, the in-game shirts and clothes featuring the face of Sahadi Sedona, the main antagonist of Pandora Tomorrow, is a reference to the real-life Marxist revolutionary figure Che Guevara, whose face can be commonly seen on clothing. Fact 37, in the cryogenic lab in Paris, Francois Koldeboff is trapped in a room with a cell phone. If you check the credits, he is one of the co-producers in the single-player game. Fact 38, in the Nice-France mission, you can see a guard with some magazines on the ground. If you zoom in on them, you will notice that one of them has the cover of Prince of Persia on it. Fact 39, in Pandora Tomorrow, Lambert's coffee mug has the Ubisoft logo on it. <laughs> oh, Ubisoft. Fact 40, in 2005, the first Splinter Cell novel was a top 10 New York Times paperback fiction bestseller. With my boy Tom, yeah. Fact 41, the Splinter Cell novel also ranked 8th among Wall Street Journal's mass market paperback bestsellers. Fact 42, in 2004, Northrop Grumman created the world's first fused multispectral weapon site, FMWS, to the U.S. Army, which combines infrared and night vision, similar to Sam Fisher's trifocal goggles. Prior to this, such tools were considered too difficult to make. Fact 43, Splinter Cell also spawned a successful series of novels. Fact 44, the Splinter Cell novels are all written under the pseudonym David Michaels. Fact 45, one of the Splinter Cell ghostwriters, Raymond Benson, has also written several James Bond novels. Fact 46, Chaos Theory is the first game in the series to be rated M rather than T for teen. Fact 47, Red Nishin from Chaos Theory translates to Red Herring in Japanese. Fact 48, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory contains a set of third echelon training videos that are very amusing. Fact 49, in Chaos Theory, there's a quick reference to Gordon Freeman from the Half-Life series when Grimm says crowbars are for geeky video game characters. Fact 50, when interrogating one of the guards in Chaos Theory, Sam gives his name as Harry Tuttle, which is a reference to the Tuttle character played by Robert De Niro in the 1985 film Brazil. Fact 51, in Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, you can grab a guard and he will say, it's not like you to shake my body and ammo will drop to the floor. Apparently, this game doesn't take place in the Metal Gear Solid universe, but this can totally happen. Fact 52, in Chaos Theory, two guards can be heard discussing a new Prince of Persia game. He's got the new Prince of Persia. Presumably, they're talking about the Two Thrones, which was released in the same year. <laughs> oh, Ubisoft. Fact 53, at the end of the displaced level, interrogating the last guard will make him say, don't get my new suit wrinkled, or something close to that. Guards apparently are also fans of James Bond. Fact 54, the sinking of the USS Clarence E. Walsh from Chaos Theory is also featured in the PlayStation 2 GameCube version of Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon 2. Fact 55, Splinter Cell Chaos Theory was banned in South Korea because of the in-game depiction of the destruction of Seoul, the country's capital. The ban was lifted at the end of 2006. Fact 56, Sam Fisher's age isn't consistent in all materials. The majority of the games give his birth as 1957, aside from the manual for Splinter Cell Double Agent, which gives his birth year as 1966. Fact 57, according to Double Agent manuals and concept materials, Sam is 5'10". However, in the game's cutscenes, Sam is depicted as being taller than Lambert, who is 6'2". <laughs> Maybe Sam just cuts an imposing figure. Fact 58, in Splinter Cell Double Agent, there's a super secret hidden mission in which you rescue baby seals in outer space. Fact 59, Sam Fisher can seduce Enrica Villablanca during the second JBA headquarters mission of Splinter Cell Double Agent. Ooh la la. Fact 60, Splinter Cell Double Agent has two versions. The first version story, Xbox, Windows, and PS3, takes place in the present, while the second version's PS2 GameCube story is done in a flashback sequence throughout the game. Fact 61, the original story for Splinter Cell Conviction featured Sam Fisher as a 
fugitive who would hide in plain sight without goggles or gadgets, leaving Fisher to use the environment against his enemies. Fact 62, the idea of Sam hiding out in the open didn't go over too well, and so the game was hidden away and reworked to focus more on traditional stealth, with hiding in shadows and stabbing hapless guards, as it should be. Fact 63, the developers had used the letters PEV to describe the basic gameplay of this new version of Conviction. Prepare, execute, and vanish. Fact 64, Fisher's character in Conviction is informed by the three JBs, Jason Bourne, Jack Bauer, and James Bond. So yes, in case you didn't notice, there are three special agents, all that have the initials JB. Fact 65, the animation in Conviction ate up enough memory that at one point was actually affecting normal gameplay performance. You would get things like disarming bad guys but not being able to take their guns afterwards. But why are people even using guns? It's a stealth game. Fact 66, Eamon Tobin, composer of the soundtrack in Splinter Cell Chaos Theory 2005, also worked on Conviction, making him the first composer to come back to the series. Fact 67, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Essentials is the first Splinter Cell game to be developed solely for portable entertainment systems. It's not the only Splinter Cell available in portable form though. Fact 68, the lighting and Conviction was put together much later than one might think, since the game took such a stark turn in direction. Fact 69, Mark and Execute, a gameplay mechanic introduced in Conviction, came from creative director Maxim Bilen's idea of Sam as a panther. The panther motif would continue into Blacklist, as would the Mark and Execute mechanic. Hey everyone, sneaking on for a quick break to let you know that next week we will be continuing the assassination extravaganza with 107 facts about Hitman. So if you're into murdering people by snapping their necks, this week and next week are for you. And with that, back to the facts. Although, I'm gonna take the next one. Sneak. Number 70. Sam Fisher's license to kill comes from the fifth freedom, an imaginary freedom in which somebody is allowed to kill, steal, or do whatever they have to to protect the other freedoms of the United States. It's called the fifth freedom in reference to the four freedoms FDR mentioned in his 1941 State of the Union address. The freedom of speech, the freedom of worship, the freedom from want, and the freedom from fear. Fact 71. Splinter Cell Conviction is the first game in the series that has you control someone other than Sam Fisher in the main story mode. Fact 72. Sam uses the Israeli martial art Krav Maga. The fact Fact was well established in the novels. Also featured in the novels was people getting hit in the solar plexus. The author really liked that, I don't know why. Fact 73, the handgun technique Sam uses is called Center Axis Relock, or CAR, or CAR, whatever you want to call it. Fact 74, Sam's preferred weapon is the FN 57, which is first referred to by its real name and conviction. In previous games, it was the SC pistol. Its functions vary pretty wildly. In conviction, it can't disable electronics anymore, which is a shame. Fact 75, in conviction, Sam has to do without his iconic goggles, which I'm sure the merchandising team just loved. He does get a strange sonar goggles later though. They're just not as good. Fact 76, Conviction is the first game Fisher doesn't get orders from Lambert, because things don't go all too well for Lambert in the previous games. Fact 77, Conviction also sets itself apart by not being so explicit about when it takes place, perhaps because speculating the future is really hard. Fact 78, Black Arrow, the antagonists, were formed from the remains of the Displaced International, a military group from Chaos Theory. Fact 79, in Sam's flashback to protecting his daughter, a lot of objects in the room recreate the three points of light that the trifocal goggles give off. If they weren't going to give him the goggles, by golly, they were going to reference them somehow. Fact 80, Rabbids from the Rayman games, and later their own games, make a cameo appearance in Splitter Cell Conviction. Fact 81, the characters Ben Hansen and Maya Valentina, who were first introduced in the Splinter Cell Conviction novel, make a brief appearance in the prologue for the co-op mode in the Splinter Cell Conviction game as Hansen for Archer and Castrell. Fact 82, the Splinter Cell games have sold a total of 31 million copies. Fact 83, Splinter Cell Conviction is the first game of the series to not have any non-lethal weapons. You're gonna have to either be really subtle or really not subtle with how you tackle missions. Fact 84, Chaos Theory is the first game in the series where Sam uses a knife to kill enemies. Fact 85, another reference to George Orwell's 1984 can be heard in Pandora Tomorrow, which is when Sam says the Norman Soth asked me about the chestnut tree. Fact 86, in Conviction, you can infiltrate the third echelon offices, which might be interesting and neat, except that it seems weird that a super secret organization spawned by another secret organization has an office and a logo. Fact 87, on July 4th, 2006, North Korea launched missiles into the sea. In Chaos Theory, on July 4th, 2007, a North Korean missile sinks the USS Clarence E. Walsh. Fact 88, Blacklist was hinted by Jade Raymond from Ubisoft Toronto in November 2010. The game was a 
officially revealed during Microsoft's E3 2012 press conference, which was done through a gameplay trailer that also showed off some elements of Kinect's vocal features. Fact 89, Blacklist is the first Splinter Cell game to be made entirely at the Ubisoft Toronto studio. Fact 90, Michael Ironside does not reprise his role as Sam Fisher in Splinter Cell Blacklist. One of the reasons cited is the physical demands of mocap. Fact 91, Eric Johnson would take over the role of Sam Fisher. <laughs> Welcome to the wonderful world of killing, Eric. Fact 92, Splinter Cell Blacklist takes place six months after Splinter Cell Conviction. Sam just can't catch a break. Fact 93, Blacklist gave the mark and execute feature new function. Players can kill in motion, meaning that players can use the execute command while moving through the level. Fact 94, Splinter Cell Blacklist brought back everyone's favorite reminder that the grass is always greener on the other side. Spies versus Mercs mode. Fact 95, Blacklist is the first game to have Sam Fisher be playable in co-op mode. Fact 96, Splinter Cell Blacklist Spiderbot was released for iOS. You can play as one of Sam's gadgets for infiltrating security. It helps you appreciate the hard work of soulless automatons. Fact 97, there's a running joke about someone trying to sell Sam an elephant in the end credits for both Conviction and Blacklist. Fact 98, unlike other novels in the series, Blacklist Aftermath isn't published under the name David Michaels. Fact 99, one of the achievements in the video game Vanquish is named Fisher is the other Sam, which requires proceeding on the monorail without being spotted, as a reference to Splinter Cell Sam Fisher. Number 100, in the trailer for Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patrols, Naked Snake, Big Boss, wears a pair of night vision goggles similar to Sam's trifocal goggles, which is especially amusing since Splinter Cell came from Ubisoft wanting to make a Metal Gear. Fact 101, there is an achievement called My Name is Sam in Rainbow Six Vegas 2, in which the player must have five headshot kills in a row with a silenced weapon. Sam's trifocal goggles are used in the achievement photo. Fact 102, the mask of the third man from the game Destiny is a reference to Sam Fisher's goggles. Fact 103, along with other Ubisoft games, the cover for Splinter Cell Double Agent makes a cameo in a pawn shop in the video game Watch Dogs. Fact 104, in 2002, IGN chose Splinter Cell as the best Xbox game of the year. Fact 105, the original Splinter Cell has sold 3 million copies worldwide as of 2015. Fact 106, Sam Fisher ranks 24 on the Guinness Top 50 Video Game Characters of All Time list. Fact 107, Ubisoft has announced plans to turn several other game franchises, including Splinter Cell, into feature-length films. As of July 2015, Tom Hardy is slated to play good old Sam. And that sums up our 107 facts of Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell. If there is a game that you have to see us do, comment below, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. My name is Brittany and I will see you soon.